often there's a lack of understanding of the kinds of sense of proportion in the life of a Muslim. There are some priorities that are more important than others. Your prayer is more important than some other things. There are other aspects of our Islam that make your Islam more beautiful. They're preferred acts, but they don't come nearly to the status of the prayer. Similarly, when it comes to sins or shortcomings, there are things that we should do. Of course, you should try to enter your home with your right foot and when you go to the restroom, enter with your left foot and say certain adhkar and these are things you should try to do. And ignoring them is somewhat problematic, but then there are things that are major sins. And often what happens when people have a confused or a distorted sense of proportion is that they take care of the small things. They're very careful about the smaller details. I'm following this particular sunnah. I'm making sure that I did this dhikr. I made sure that, for example, it's Friday today, so I recited my surah al-kahf, etc., etc. So they take care of these small things. But at the same time, they ignore the gigantic major sins that are right there in their face, and they're doing them without even thinking about them. That may have to do with maybe earning income in an impermissible way. That may have to do with a major sin like zina, riba, and things like that. Some big, big evil sins are right there in your face, and you're blind to them as though you're not even doing them. But this other smaller stuff you're doing, making yourself feel better that you're practicing the religion. Which is why the Qur'an actually gives us a clear sense of proportion. What Allah says in this ayah is, إِن تَجْتَنِبُوا كَبَائِرَ مَا تُنْهَوْنَ عَنْهُ If you were to avoid and make great effort to avoid the major, the, the grievous portions of the kinds of things that you have been forbidden from. So there's stuff you're forbidden to do, but there's some pretty serious stuff that you all know that you're not supposed to do. If you can manage staying away from that stuff, then as for the lesser shortcomings, نُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ will bury away the re remaining sins of yours. Meaning take care of the serious matters first, take care especially what the Qur'an will highlight money matters, how we make money and how we spend money. That's a pretty serious issue. Taking care of the rights of the people around us, from everyone within the family, to extend it in the community, people like the orphan or the poor, etc. Taking care of them and not, you know, فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُ الْيَتِيمِ Those are big kinds of sins. Then in the way that we conduct our business, transactions when you owe somebody money, when you got paid to fulfill a contract, when you were paid to provide a service, the honesty that you do at your job, those are pretty big, heavy items. Similarly, the engagement in one of the greatest crimes mentioned in the Qur'an financially, riba, is a pretty big thing. Similarly, when it comes to our chastity, things like zina, is a major, major thing. So major that Allah says, don't even go close to it. لا تقربوا zina. Take care of those things, and yes, you will fall short in some other things. Maybe your salah didn't have perfect khushur. Maybe your wudu wasn't amazing. You missed a drop or two here and there. Maybe that happened. Maybe when you were reciting Qur'an or when you were praying, your mind was elsewhere. Maybe when you went to do hajj or umrah, you overlooked certain rituals, or you didn't do the best. Maybe you lost your patience every once in a while. Maybe some things like that happened. Those things will be compensated for because you're taking care of the major obligations and staying away from major, major sins. That's a sense of proportion that the Qur'an promotes. But what's remarkable to me about this ayah isn't just that Allah just says that He will overlook those sins. We get often embarrassed about those sins and those shortcomings. Allah adds, وَنُدْخِلْكُمْ مُدْخَلًا karima." I will enter you into a graceful entry. In other words, those small errors and shortcomings are not going to be highlighted. You are going to be dignified and honored and those things are, those embarrassing mishaps are going to be almost erased from your record or sponged from your record. So you're not humiliated when you come before Allah. You'll be given a dignified entry.